due to this week's mailbag length and number of questions, I'll only be taking a few just to keep the episode within a decent time limit. That doesn't mean I'm not going to answer all of your questions, though, so I'm going to jump on the forums and answer what I can. And if you'd like, I can also answer some in Ventrilo as well, if you guys would like to join up for some discussions there as well. And I'll take the first question from the new user, Kotik. Welcome to the forums. And he asks, Hey, I'm new to this website and channel, and it looks really good, but I'm still debating as to play a Smuggler or a Jedi Knight. Anyone have an idea as which to play? I feel as though a smuggler will be stuck as the healer hiding behind a rock and not getting any of action. And I really want to see the Jedi storyline, but with the guild I'm almost in everyone is a Jedi and I won't be able to do flashpoints with my friends. Any advice? Well my first advice is play the class you want to play despite what your friends are playing. If they're all playing Jedi Knights, play a Jedi Knight. They may switch up and decide that they don't like the Jedi Knight, and then you'll find that you may be the only one. Now, that being said, I don't think you have the fear of playing a smuggler and being stuck behind a rock and healing, because you've got options depending on which advanced spec you choose. If you choose the Scoundrel advanced class, yeah, you could be healing, but you can also be DPSing as that advanced class as well, so you can pick either one and specialize closer to your playstyle. If you pick the Gunslinger, then yes, you'll be full on DPS, rocking two blasters and dealing and dishing out tons of damage and you won't really have to be worrying about hiding behind a rock nearly as much you'll be dishing out so much damage you'll kill stuff fast enough and that's how you'll stay alive so i wouldn't not play a class based upon the idea that you may be hiding behind a rock the whole time uh, you can choose a spec that doesn't rely on cover for the smuggler uh, not all of the advanced classes and not all the specs rely 100 percent on that mechanic the second question comes from Raydog, who asks, I was wondering what you think about the loot system. We know we can play both single player and multiplayer, but what about the loot? Will I get loot for only my character while basically soloing the game? Or will it be better to group up because the loot system will be random no matter what? What I know from what they've said about the loot system so far is that in a group, it's a role system and a need agreed based system. So if you can use it, you can say you need it. If you can't use it, you can greet it. And if everybody can't use it and they all greet, it's a roll to see who gets it to vendor. That being said, there are many different ways to gain gear in the game. So one of them being the acquisition of social points, which you get by normal questing and making decisions along your storyline path. In those decisions, you gain social points, which you can then use to buy gear from a vendor. Now, I'm not sure if the social points are increase in a group, but I do know that you have to roll versus three other players in order to win that roll and gain those points. So you may actually be better off soloing to get social points. However, you can also get points for PvP and for flash points. That loot is going to be better just because it's based on a group setting and it requires a little bit more strategic gameplay and it's a little bit more difficult. So a good rule of thumb for MMOs is always assume that the more challenging the gameplay, the better loot. And I think that'll hold true for Star Wars The Old Republic. The third question comes from Scorpion Leader, who asks, I have never joined a guild in pre-launch of any game. My questions are, of the many servers, how do we find each other? And if we end up on a server that is unbalanced, then what? I think the Old Republic is one of the first games to do a guild pre-launch program, so this is really new and purely going to be theoretical on my part explaining how this is all going to play out. However, if you join a guild pre-launch, the second stage we're supposed to be able to choose what server we want to go on to and choose our allies and go on to a server where we know the enemies as well. So if we're going to join Red Rancor as an Empire Guild, we can choose what other Empire Guilds we want to go on and decide we all want to play on the same server versus certain Republic Guilds. So we almost find the balance ourselves on the server in this guild pre-launch program if we want to. If you end up on a server that is unbalanced, I firmly believe that Biomart will try to filter new players into the unbalanced servers and to playing on the lower unpopulated republic or empire whichever happens to be on that server. I do think especially in 
two-faction MMO gameplay that server balance is very important and is something that World of Warcraft tried and strived for but did not quite achieve. There just were a lot of servers where they were just one-sided. Hopefully Bioware will work at balancing that load themselves. My tip for you would be to find a guild pre-launch that you would like to stick with and most likely they will form allies and enemies that they will go into a server with and hopefully they will find enough to balance out that service population, at least in the beginning. I can't really say what will happen after that, because this is all new for us, so nobody's really been through something quite like this before. It's a brand new experience, so nobody can really speak from experience. So, like I said, I'm speaking purely theoretically on this one. The fourth question comes from the user Arya, who's also a new user. Welcome to Red Rancor. Arya asks, I know the devs said that they will make it very difficult to switch between two advanced classes like Juggernaut and Marauder, but I'm wondering if we will be able to reallocate out talent points easily with our chosen advanced class. For example, could someone who gets tired of playing a DPS sorcerer build change their focus towards support or healing? With all the theory crafting inherent to MMORPGs, they have to allow us some flexibility in redistributing our talent points in order to min-max, right? I do think they're going to allow us a pretty decent amount of flexibility and respecting within the advanced class. I think the big question uh, and the one that they did not want as much flexibility with is swapping advanced classes themselves. But if you're just talking about one advanced class swapping between different talent trees there, I think they're going to give you a decent amount of freedom reallocating those talent points. I'm sure the cost will be more detrimental to you the more you do it, uh, and there will be some sort of increased cost so you can't just do it on the fly as much as you want. But as far as I'm aware, Bioware is letting us respect talent points within the advanced class a little bit more easily than they are allowing us to swap advanced classes themselves. And that'll about end our mailbag section for this week. This week I have two shoutouts to make, the first to Guild Umbra. Guild Umbra is a Empire Guild, and they're located on Guild Umbra, that's G-U-I-L-D-U-M-B-R-A dot net. Guild Umbra runs their own podcast series, and they're recruiting for Star Wars Old Republic. They're already up to about 95 members, they're a moderate gameplay guild, 10 to 20 hours a week. They do have some scheduled play sessions and a voice chat requirement. And Good Umbra has been around for a while already pre-Star Wars The Old Republic launch. So these guys are taking the game seriously. They're a great guild to get into. So if you're looking for some great people to play with, check out Umbra and even send them an application. I also want to throw a shout out to Tor Syndicate. ForSyndicate.com is a portal for all your Star Wars The Old Republic sites uh, it's one organized location for you to go through and search whatever Star Wars entity you're looking for, whether it be podcast sites, fan sites, guild sites, you name it, you can find it here on the Syndicate. They do a great job of launching their own podcast series as well, and you can check out this week's episode number 32, The W. If you want to run a tour fan site yourself, these are the guys you want to be contacting. And that being said, that'll end our VCast episode 12. For July 31st, 2011, I'm your host, Astral, giving you guys Swotor updates every week. You can find us on the web at www.redrancor.com, on YouTube under the name FTW Broadcasting and under the name Red Rancor, on Twitter under the name Red Rancor, and on Facebook under the name Red Rancor. Hope you guys have a great rest of the week, and may the Force be with you.